Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a geometry puzzle. Six circles with radius one are inscribed in an isosceles right triangle as shown. Find the area of the triangle. So this is a circle packing puzzle. Circle packing puzzles are fun and you can pack circles in many different shapes. So in this problem, we know that the radius of each circle is equal to one. So they're unit circles and we're going to find the area of the triangle. Now, we're going to start by making connections, right? Obviously. So let's go ahead and start here. I'd like to here actually connect all these centers, right? With one segment all the way here. And then bring down some segments here, like one, two, and three. Okay. Now, what I'd like to do is, of course, I do need to make a little bit more. So let me go ahead and connect this point here. So notice that those are points of tangency. So a lot of good things happen here because we know that the radius is one and also at those points, the radius is gonna be perpendicular to the tangent, right? That's a really important feature that we have to take advantage of. And moreover, we also know that if we connect the center here this way, right? that basically produces two congruent right triangles. In other words, we do get a isosceles, no, not isosceles, but what is the word? We get, we get an angular bisector, right? Exactly, okay, cool. Now we also have some information about this triangle. Notice that we're given that this is an isosceles right triangle, right? So what is that supposed to mean? Well, first of all, it means it's a right triangle, but it also means that the side lengths are the legs are equal, in other words, right? So it's kind of like x, x, and root 2x. Okay, cool. And that also means that the angles are 45, 45, and 90. So this is actually a 45 degree angle. Half of that would be 22.5 degrees, okay? But I'm gonna write it in ter terms of radians so that you don't have to worry about whether this is a degree or not. So this is going to be, in other words, the whole thing is going to be pi over four. So half of that is just going to be pi over eight. So this angle measures pi over eight radians. Is that good? Okay, cool. Now we also know that the radius is one. So this is one, this is one, and 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 this is one. Great. So now that gives us more lengths here. So for example, this is going to be a one, this is going to be a two, and that's also going to be a two. Great. Now if I can find one more length, which is very critical here, right? And that's going to be this missing piece. And that's the missing piece of the puzzle. If you can find that piece, we'll be done with the puzzle. Awesome. Well, almost, right? Because we got to find the area. Hopefully I won't forget to find the area at the end because what usually happens is I find the side length and then just leave. Okay. So how am I going to find that length here? Well, we're going to use pi over eight. So Here's my right triangle that I'd like to use here. Let me shade it. And since there's another copy, I can probably just go ahead and copy, uh, shade the other one because it'll be less confusing that way. Okay, so now I do have a right triangle whose uh, one of the angles is pi over eight. And I do know that the height of the triangle is one. So I wanna find the base of the triangle. Or if I can find a hypotenuse, I can go off that way too. But finding the base is easier. Why? Right. Let me show you. So. See if I can draw that triangle here. So something like this. And then I'm gonna go like this, right? And then I'm gonna be connecting these two points. And that should produce a right triangle, great. So now, what we know is that this angle measures pi over eight, right? That is pi over eight radians, don't forget that. Or 22.5 degrees, cool. And I also know that the height is one, so that gives us a little bit more information, right? Okay, so the height is one. And I'm trying to find the base. Okay, what is the base? I don't know, let's call that B. Okay, great. Now, I can use trigonometry, right? Isn't that cool? Trigonometry is actually cool. Now, how do I use trigonometry? Well, tangent pi over eight, I think, right? Tangent pi over eight is equal to one over B. So if you switch around, B is gonna be one over tangent pi over eight, which can be written as cotangent pi over eight. Great, 
So I just got to calculate cotangent pi over 8, and it's easy to find. I'll show you. Then I can just go ahead and, you know, find the answer from there. But how do you find cotangent pi over 8? If you can find tangent pi over 8, you can just find the reciprocal, so on and so forth. Well, let me go ahead and use this right triangle here for my purpose. Now, here's what I'm going to do. Normally, I wouldn't do it this way, but I think since I already have a nice triangle, don't you think that's a nice triangle? I can just go ahead and go off of that, hopefully, right? Okay, so let me go off of this color. Now, so here's what I would normally do. So why don't we make this into or change it into an isosceles right triangle, something like this. Well, if that's pi over 4, then I'm getting an isosceles right triangle. Now, since this is 1, this is also going to be 1, right? And the hypotenuse is going to be what? Root 2. Awesome. Now, here's the thing. This is pi over 4. This is pi over 8. Use the exterior angle theorem. It's a beautiful theorem, right? Then from there, you're going to get that this angle also measures pi over 8 because their sum has to equal pi over 4. So it's, in other words, it's half of it. Okay, what is that supposed to mean? It means that this triangle here, let me change that color there. So let's use blue. We didn't use blue, right? Okay. So this triangle here is isosceles. Why? Because the angles are congruent. Pi over 8, pi over 8. Awesome. And that means this piece here is root 2 because you have to have equal sides, right? Okay, great. So now I got a really beautiful result because now from here I can find the cotangent of pi over 8. Well, tangent can be found. It's 1 over root 2 plus 1. But if you find the reciprocal, to keep a long story short, b is equal to cotangent pi over 8, which is equal to root 2 plus 1. Awesome. I got the base. Let's go back to our original shape. Now I know that this is root 2 plus 1. What do I need? Well, I do need to find the area of the triangle. And how do you find it? If you know the side lengths or the legs, you can just multiply them and multiply the result by one half. So here we go. The area of the triangle is going to be, well, I don't know the base though. Do I know the legs? Well, you can do arithmetic, right? Hopefully. I'm not very strong, but let me try. Okay. So if you add these up, 1 plus 2 plus 2, I get 5. Add the root 2 plus 1, I get 6 plus root 2. Beautiful. So the base, the big thing, or the one of the legs, is root 2 plus 6. Beautiful. So what I'm supposed to do is root 2 plus 6 multiplied by itself, in other words, square it, and multiply that by 1 half, and you'll get the answer. Nice. Let's go out and do the work. If you square root 2 plus 6, a plus b quantity squared is a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. So that's going to look like 2 plus 12 root 2 plus 36 all over 2. And that is going to equal what? Okay. So now I'm going to write the area. So allow me to erase this tangent stuff here because we already got the answer, right? So we don't care. And the result is going to be the area of the triangle is going to be because these two are going to add up to 38. Then I can just go ahead and divide both sides by 2. And that's going to give me 19 plus 6 root 2 for the area. And that brings us to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know. Like, subscribe, and what was the third one? Comment. Okay, I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe and take care. Bye-bye.